Night Sessions Television presents a tribute to Bruce Lee, mixed martial artist. I do not believe in styles anymore. I mean, basically, we have only two hands and two feet. So styles tends to uh, 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 not only separate men, you know, because they have their own doctrines, and then the doctrine became the gospel truth, you know, that you cannot change, you know. But if you do not have style, you just say, well, here, here I am, you know, as, as, as a human being. How can I express myself totally and completely? Now, that way, you won't create a style, because style is a crystallization, you know. I mean, that way, it's a process of continuing growth. Bruce Lee is undoubtedly the most influential martial artist of our time. He's also considered by many to be the godfather of modern mixed martial arts. Renowned for his extraordinary strength, willpower, and wisdom, he left a lasting legacy as both a fighter and a philosopher. We need emotional content, not anger. Now try again with me. How did it feel to you? Let me think. Don't think. Feel. What is the best style? The ultimate style is the individual himself who is not limited to any style. So he is not in bondage or a slave to any system. That was Bruce's philosophy to utilize the body and mind to the fullest extent. The concept of training the body and mind to the fullest extent is, is where you actually get to the utopian state. You believe, you believe that your opponent in front of you is that if, if, if your life is, is on the line, it's a matter of life and death, you put that concept into your mind and you have all the techniques behind it based upon your particular uh, body composition. What works for one person may not work for another person. The person who is obese, obese, he can actually mow you down with his whole body. Okay? You see what I'm saying? That's how you that's how you adapt your body and utilize what you can to the fullest extent by practicing and learning particular a few techniques that will work for you. I said empty your mind. Be formless, shapeless, like water. Now you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now water can flow or it can crash. Be water, my friend. The focus of Lee's new approach to martial arts is on attack, or more precisely, on intercepting the opponent's attack with an attack of your own. <laughs> As the Cantonese term for unarmed combat is typically represented by a character indicating a fist, Lee christens his new approach Jeet Kune Do, the way of the intercepting fist. Now what is this, uh, what is this thing you do? In Cantonese, Jeet Kune Do, the way of the intercepting fist. Intercepting fist, huh? Or foot. Come on, touch me, any way you can. <laughs> to reach me, you must move to me. Your attack offers me an opportunity to intercept you. In this case, I'm using my longest weapon, my sidekick, against the nearest target, your kneecap. This can be compared to your left jab in boxing, except it's much more damaging. I see. Well, speaking of a left jab... Oh! This is time I intercept your emotional tenseness. You see, from your thought to your fist, how much time was lost. You know Wing Chun is the base of the system, but this is where it's like doing the road work, stretching out. Bruce also came out with a book called The Philosophical Art of Chinese Gong Fu, which you know that's going to be like 500 of them, and they're the very collectible items right now. Well, Gong Fu is originated in China. It is the ancestor of Karate and Jiu Jitsu. It's more of a complete system, and it's more fluid. By that, I mean it's more flowing. There is continuity in movement instead of uh, one movement, two movement, and then stop. In Kung Fu, it always involves a very fast motion. Like, for instance, a guy grabbing your hand. It's not the idea to do so many steps. Step him right on the instep. He'll let go. This
this is what we mean by simplicity. Same thing in striking and in everything. It has to be based on a very minimum motion so that everything would be directly expressed through one motion. And he's gone. Doing it gracefully, not to go ah yelling and jumping all over him, but to do it. Excuse me. Actually, Bruce did uh, uh, go outside the system in terms of the Chinese uh, concept. You don't teach outside your race, which he did. Gung Fu was was alive in most all the Chinese community, but uh, there was nothing taught to outsiders, basically. And Bruce came along, and and with that basis of. Uh, trying to create equal, equality amongst all people regardless of race. Uh, he chose to, you know, to let anybody into his school regardless of what color or race they were. He wanted them to evolve and, and teach, but it was not a thing where uh, you have to teach what I taught. You have to teach uh, what you learn, and that's going to be more than what he taught, hopefully, you know. For, for the students that, that understood what he was doing. As long as he knew what was what was in their heart was good and positive, why he, he took them in, and uh, like when he was down in San Francisco where the Chinese community was much more uh, uh, like being in uh, China, uh, they, they, they took exception to it, and he had to fight his way out of it. In Oakland, he received a challenge from the San Francisco Chinese martial arts community. There was a gentleman by the name of Wong Jock Man who came from San Francisco with an ultimatum, and he wanted to set up what the rules were. And Bruce said, bullshit, you know, there is no such rules. If he were to be defeated in this challenge, would have to cease teaching Caucasian or non-Chinese students. What happened was this was a very enlightening experience for Bruce because he ended up chasing this guy with his Wing Chun, straight punching him, and the guy was running. He turned out running. He, he, was, he was straight punching this guy uh, for about three minutes, and Bruce got out of breath. Bruce finally got a hold of him and took him down to the floor and made him give up. The guy gave up. You know, they got Bruce kicked him out of there and whatnot. From here, this is where Bruce learned that his style was limited. When we're talking about styles now. But Lee has now come to see that the ultimate truth does not reside in ways or styles, but within the soul of each individual. To, to answer your final the, the question that we start off with, what is the ultimate style? The ultimate style is the individual himself who is not limited to any style. To me, okay, to me. Ultimately, martial art means honestly expressing yourself. Now, it is very difficult to do. I mean, it is, it is easy for me to put on a show and be cocky yeah. and be flooded with a cocky feeling and then yeah. feel like pretty cool or and all that. Or I can f make all kinds of phony things, you see what I mean? Blinded by it. Or I can show you some f really fancy movement. But to express oneself honestly, not lying to oneself, and to express myself honestly. That, my friend, is very hard to do, and you have to train. You have to keep your reflexes so that when you want it, it's there. When you want to move, you're moving, and when you move, you are determined to move, not taking one inch, not anything less than that. If I want to punch, I'm gonna do it, man, and I'm gonna do it, you see? So, I mean, so that is the type of thing you have to train yourself into it, to become one with the... You think, 